a void of my own creation. An 8.25 gram mushroom and 50 milligram THC trip report sent in by a subscriber. To preface, I'll be writing in present tense as things happen up until the point of onset. And once I begin writing in past tense, it is from the post trip perspective, though I may still try and write as the trip progresses. It's a beautiful morning. I usually try and sleep in on the weekends that I don't have my two year old, but I always wake up early anyway, with today being no exception, as I awoke at 6.50am. Today is Friday, May 26th, 2023, and I've decided to mark the occasion for the trip I'll be taking today by writing my first trip report. As a writer and psychonaut, it only makes sense to give it a shot, right? Here's a little bit about me. I'm 25 years old living in Phoenix, Arizona. And up until July 2022, I'd never experienced a psychedelic. I've always been a deeply spiritual person, so it has intrigued me, but I never had the opportunity to try anything until then. So I first started this trek into psychedelia last July, taking one gram of psilocybe cubensis with one 10 milligram THC edible, with that night being solidified as one of the top three most amazing experiences of my life to date, and I became instantaneously fixated on building up my dosage to experience true ego death. First, it was 1 gram, then 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1.25, 1.65, 2, 2.25, 2.5, 2.75, 2 and 3 grams, all with various levels of THC being consumed. And at the time of this writing, my largest dose today is 4 grams, taken exactly 2 weeks ago today. I decided that for today's trip, I would jump up to 8.25 grams with 50 milligrams of THC edibles. In all honesty, I was expecting 3 grams and 4 grams to be as transformative as my very first psychedelic experience last year, but it's come up short, even though I did begin experiencing ego dissolution at 4 grams. From this point on, I'll be describing the trip in past tense, as it took me some time to completely recollect everything that happened. I was planning to consume the mushrooms and edibles at 9.30pm. But at about 8.30, and even after meditating and setting the intention, I began to feel acute anxiety due to the realisation that I would be taking a megadose for the first time alone. I asked a very close friend if she would come be my trip sir, and she agreed. I explained what my intention was, and that I planned to deprive my senses and go lie down naked in the dark once the trip began, but I'd still hang out with her for as long as I could prior. These would be crucially beneficial decisions to have shared the plan with her, even though the trip would come to bloom before I even made it to my bed. After measuring out the full 8.25 grams, I began to dread the inevitably horrible taste of the mushrooms. To get around this, I put the entire dosage into a food processor and ground the mushrooms down to a fine powder. To my surprise, it still ended up tasting absolutely terrible, even after mixing it all with Nesquik chocolate powder and whole milk. The chocolate milk definitely covered a world of hurt though. I would then follow this up with the THC edibles all in one go. After chasing the silo of chocolate milk and edibles with water and Sprite, I stripped naked and laid down on the couch. My trip sitter did not mind my nudity. We are intimately familiar with each other. She sat at my desk and we hung out talking, waiting excitedly. Only 15 minutes had passed when the euphoria began to creep into my body, slithering up my legs and into my chest then filling my whole body in a matter of minutes. I could barely move. I was already so blissfully euphoric, to the point that I was dissociating due to it. My sitter noticed the change in my demeanour as I sank into the couch catatonically, staring up at the ceiling. And she started asking me about how I was feeling. I remember being caught off guard by how rapidly the trip was beginning to happen, not even 20 minutes following consumption. Just after the 24 minute mark, the popcorn ceiling above me began shifting into a massive mandala that spanned the entire ceiling's surface, undulating with deep calm. It felt as if it were there the whole time, and was only waiting for me to notice it before the true trip began. Once the entire shape formed, the popcorn texturing began to sway like upside down grass affected by non-existent wind, moving in all different directions and getting taller and shorter while also sliding across the ceiling like tiles, tessellating. I picked up my phone to reply to a text to find the phone pulsing, with each pulse moving down into my hand and arm right up to my shoulder, like a heartbeat with only one thumb. 
Then, inexplicably, I started to cry. First a quiet sob, then ugly crying into a full-blown weep. All these repressed emotions and buried feelings about my failed marriage and my insecurities about being a good father, son, brother, friend, person, musician, had come to the surface. And I realise now that that was the first time I had even truly cried since I got divorced last year. It felt like the tears couldn't stop. Like they'd been wanting to come out for so long that once there was an opportunity, they were running for the hills. My sitter came over and embraced me and let me hold her while I wept, consoling me. Although I don't recall speaking, she said I would whimper things like, I just want to be a good dad. I miss my mum and dad. I miss my sister. I just want to be a good person. I hope I'm a good man. And she said she reassured me whenever I said those things. By the time I began crying, the time dilation was in full swing and I was convinced I had been crying for years on end. I was the most exhausted I'd ever been, but she said that I cried for only 15 to 20 minutes or so, even though I thought I'd cried my way into my 80s. It was during the crying that I began having such intense visual aberrations that I was completely blind and deaf, only able to see with my mind's eye, and being unable to use my eyes and ears whatsoever. I was locked inside my head, even though my sitter said I was laughing and communicating with her like normal after the crying. I still have no recollection of any conversations we'd had for the next five hours or so. I was lost in a void of my own creation. At some point, she helped me transition into my bedroom, and I do recall sitting on the floor between my dresser and bed, which is a very tight space and just barely wide enough for me to fit. I was in an upright fetal position, but I still couldn't see or hear the outside world, only the inside of me and the tetrachrome tapestries in my mind. It was here I realised I was trapped in a loop. I'm unable to recall exactly what I was saying or what was happening in the loop, but I distinctly remember feeling like the AM supercomputer from I have no mouth and I must scream. I knew that I existed and I knew that I was alive, but I couldn't move. I didn't know why I was alive, I didn't know what I was meant to do or if my purpose was to just exist. This was pure torture, because I truly felt stuck and believed I was dying, triggering the worst anxiety I've ever felt, as well as an asthma attack. I recognise in hindsight that this must have been when I was peaking, because I felt these massive waves flow through me, as I was experiencing these strenuously panicked sensations. But after what felt like an eternity of feeling stuck, I could feel the skin on my arms reacting to the cold air of my bedroom, and I could register that I was beginning to rip free of the vicious cycle. I was slowly, so very slowly coming out of the loop, and thankfully my sitter pulled me out from where I was sitting, held me on my bed, and talked me out of it. She said that I was mumbling incoherent phrases and saying names of the people in my life, including other things like Arizona, other random cities and dates, bands that I love, people I miss, books I've read, and she said I repeated my daughter's name the most. She said at one point my eyes opened, and I said, There's too much data. I can't process all of it, there's too much noise, it's so fucking loud in my head. I have to start washing these files or else I'm going to have white noise in my eyes. And I don't want white noise in my eyes, because the universe told me it wouldn't pay to get my eyes fixed. She said I also had screamed at the top of my lungs several times, I smacked my head against the dresser, and even tried to climb on the top of the dresser which, thankfully, she convinced me otherwise. She also said I would flail my arms around and punch the bed, and that at one point I slapped her too, but she didn't mind. At the climax of the trip, I did experience ego death for the very first time. I felt myself die and my body sloughing off of my soul like a snake sheds its skin. But instead of fear and anxiety, I was overjoyed and filled with this massive loving glow of the universe's embrace. I saw flowers growing in my skeleton, and bees making honey in my skull, and I wept again. This time, in fathomless gratitude, while prostrating on my bed with my head in my hands. I had become one with the loving energy of the universe, 
and the sheer weight and stupor-like pleasure of the oneness I felt made me feel drunken and godlike. It was then I realised that the universe had wiped me clean, and I was now newborn. I truly felt I was in control of everything for the first time in my life, and it was because this very universe held my hand and showed me the way. The come down began from here. The bulk of the trip was so unbelievably intense that during the come down, I felt completely sober, even though I was still totally tripping. My sitter and I were lying on my bed, and at this point my eyes were absolutely fucked. My depth perception was destroyed, making close things seem very far and gigantic, as well as vice versa. All the while, experiencing some of the most wild visual aberrations and hallucinations across my bedroom. My hands were comically fat and pulsating electrically, and I had a different number of fingers every time I looked at them. There were tiny wisps and flurries of light racing across my room like toy race cars. The ceiling would drip and stir like a primordial soup. I can't even begin to describe all that I saw, but it felt like I was on a school playground, but one that's up in the stars. And the music, oh my goodness. There was music playing in my ears that I had never heard before, and they were the most beautifully jovial songs I have ever heard in my life. I thought my sitter was playing music on her phone, but she said the room was quiet, and then I realised I was hearing all of this inside my head. I'll never be able to replicate what I heard, but to this day I still pinch myself that I got to be lucky enough to hear songs that the universe thought I would enjoy as I came down. And the craziest thing of all this was that I no longer felt human. The best way I can describe it is that I felt like a newborn stardust adrift in a cosmic wilderness, opening its eyes for the first time, awash with infinite love and basking in the phosphines. My sitter's face and body was completely distorted too. She was honestly scary as fuck to look at, which I feel bad saying, but I was tripping balls still but my hands and skin felt the cleanest I've ever felt in my life, and I couldn't help but touch her skin. It was then I realised that I worked through more than I thought. I genuinely believe that I worked through all of my trauma, and that I am now completely healed and wiped clean of the inky black that parasitised my soul. I was truly reborn, as this intensely wonderful trip was the great cleansing of everything that makes me, me. After I started to come down, my body all of a sudden felt like it was full of air, like I'd become a balloon man with a stick figure head. At this point, I was clear headed enough that I wanted to get up and go to the bathroom and finally eat something. It was 2.48am at the time I stood up, and I was so shaky I couldn't even stand on my own. I went to go use the bathroom and got a good look at myself for the first time in the entire trip, and my eyes were so dilated. It was like being face to face with a great white shark. It was profound to see my face and eyes melting and contorting, but instead of scaring me, I thought that that was the sickest shit and I was utterly mesmerised. From this point, we closed up shop in the living room and she went to bed with me because I still really needed someone to cling on to when my head was so scattered and shell-shocked. But I woke up Saturday morning feeling absolutely fine. No more hallucinations, and that afterglow has stayed with me for more than three weeks now. Even though it was an intense and at times terrifying trip, I would in no way call this a bad trip at all. This was absolutely life-changing and spectacularly cathartic. I don't know when I might trip again, but after this last one, I look forward to it with open arms. Insanity and Death A 28 Dried Gram Mushroom Trip Report Posted to Shroomery 12 years ago A few months ago after a long time where I wasn't tripping for some odd reason I would take a large number of psychedelics that would hit everyone else except for me I decided to take the penis embryo mushrooms again Them being the only mushrooms that I've ever actually tripped on Because I was having such a hard time tripping 
I decided to eat an ounce of dried penis envy. We got to the beach at around 6.30 or 7. I had more than half of the mushrooms soaking lemon juice on the way. I started munching on them as soon as we got there and took almost an hour to eat them all. I'd started tripping within 30 minutes, but nothing too much. Just the giggles, weird colours all around me. Nothing much really. A little after the hour mark it started hitting me pretty hard, but I didn't seem to notice, I just thought everyone was going kinda crazy. I heard all my friends laughing hysterically and talking random crap for what I felt was hours, and it started to get on my nerves. It turned out that they were actually all quietly staring at the sky in reality. I started telling them again and again to just shut up, shut up. Then I started hearing these weird voices everywhere screaming in other languages. I looked up and there's people all over the beach. Now I'm really aggravated. I start having difficulties breathing. I started to enter a panic. I felt my heart rate increase tremendously. And at first I saw this as a danger, but not life threatening. I told my friend I couldn't breathe. I, I can't breathe. My friends then start fighting with each other as usual, which got me completely pissed off and made everything so much worse. It's now hard for me to catch a breath and I feel like I'm having an asthma attack. I started pouring sweat. I must have lost five pounds in water. I had this ten foot circle of sand around me wet from my sweat and my body temperature was so high. Now I'm not only worried about not breathing but also dehydration. At this point for some reason I thought I was rolling too and that was causing the dehydration. I started losing my sanity more and more and my complaining to my friends started becoming aggressive demands and soon led me to screaming at the top of my lungs. It was right now that I was stripping so hard that I could not make out my actual surroundings. It was just all hallucinations. From then on, I was completely blind for a few hours. Everything I saw and heard was hallucinations. Way stronger than any DMT trip I've ever had. I looked up and all around me were these green, sexless, muscular people. All staring at the moon and doing a semi-dance or jumping motion. And chanting in this weird language. I actually felt really sober in that moment, which made me feel even worse because I thought I was actually dying and not tripping at all. I then got the idea of running to a small convenience store nearby, killing the clerk and stealing the water for my own survival. I stood up, which is easier said than done, and when I looked for the way out of the beach, all I saw was sand in every direction, endless sand, and it was daytime. I was all alone, dying. My misery started to slowly turn to torture, as I started to feel some of my organs working overload and others shutting down. I felt like I was burning alive. At this point, I was a killing machine, and nobody could get close to me. Most of the time, I was with my face in the sand, my eyes wide open and screaming at the top of my lungs. Fuck, fuck you, I'm fucking dying. I felt that anyone who stood in front of me was a threat to my survival. And if I was going to die, I would take him with me. I not only felt like I was dying, I felt like I was being murdered. I thought I saw a muscular figure in front of me and I tried to kill him with a big rock, but it turned out to just be a handful of sand. I then proceeded to punch the ground as hard as I could. Nobody would get near me. I felt completely unstoppable right now. Someone could have shoved a spear through my chest and I would have pulled it out and beat them to death with it. As more and more time passed, I tried harder and harder to fight my death. I wouldn't go out without a fight. I was ready to do anything to survive. I'd even cut myself open and do my own surgery, as I could actually diagnose myself at that point in time. I knew what was going on and where it was in my body. I remembered I was dehydrated, so I ran to the ocean and dragged two people into the water who were in my way. It took all of my strength to get up as I'd sometimes try and get up and immediately my body would shut down and I'd fall face first. When I got to the ocean I started gulping salt water before quickly realising that I would dehydrate even more so I decided to just hydrate my body by just staying in the water itself. Then all the screaming stopped and I heard a weird voice saying rip out your eyes. I immediately saw a dagger fly past me with an eyeball and I tried gouging out my eyes but then realised what I was doing, and I fell into a trance and all I could see were these pyramids with eyeballs. I kept feeling overjoyed as I had figured out what they meant, 
but then remembered I was dying and would begin screaming again. I got stuck in this loop for a while, repeating the same thing over and over and I finally gave up and realised I was going to die regardless of what I do. I just decided to lay down and wait for my death, which would hopefully be soon. When I did lay down, the pyramids came back. Then I saw the earth and I would zoom into different parts of it and see wars being fought and a lot of people being killed. After a while, I decided I couldn't handle it anymore. I decided I want to kill myself. I looked around for a knife to cut myself open but found none, so I decided to drown instead. I threw myself in the water. I waited for what seemed like 30 minutes, although it was obviously less. My girlfriend pulled me out of the water. I decided everything I did was useless as I was too weak to do anything anymore, so I decided to lay down and die with a smile. After about another 20 or 30 minutes of me just smiling, talking shit and waiting to die, my body suddenly lost all feelings, and in front of me I saw this portal in the shape of a vertical eye, and inside was a swirling pattern of eyeballs that is almost impossible to put on paper. I went through this portal and suddenly everything went black. I was finally dead. I could see my lifeless body being dragged to the sidewalk, but I was finally happy. The eye opened my eyes, and I was on a cloud and all around me were light people, much like the ones from DMT, only much more defined and with wings. There was about twelve of them. In the distance was this palace. This place was the brightest I've ever seen. Then one of these angels kneeled down and held my hand, and I felt the most intense euphoria ever. I never imagined I could be so happy. I felt like I was finally home. I'd made it to heaven. And I'd spend eternity there. It brings me to tears thinking about it. After a few moments, all of the angels got around me and grabbed me. They lifted me up. They were going to take me to somewhere. The palace, perhaps. After a few moments, I felt my body moving and I was dropped on the sidewalk. I was sitting at this point and everything was a reddish tint. And my girlfriend was in front of me, assuring me that I was okay and that I was indeed alive. I was actually disappointed to be back. It took me a good 10 to 15 minutes for me to get oriented and to stand up and leave to avoid police clearing the beach at 2am. After this, I was tripping for another two hours or so, like if on an eighth, but I felt sober since it had been so intense. I only knew I was actually tripping from looking in a mirror. This trip was followed by another bad trip on 5 grams, although not nearly as bad, and two more really uncomfortable and strange trips of 7 and 5 grams again. Every time I eat mushrooms, I get scared, but I always have a positive outcome and also very strange purging halfway through the trip. Thank you for taking the time to read my long trip report. I had to leave a lot out, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out this drawing, which is kind of what it was like. To the left is the suffering I was going through, and to the right is heaven, the place I went after I went through hell. In the middle, the blue man is what my girlfriend saw while I was going through the experience, and the beings by the pyramid are the beings that visit us in our trips. Oh, and the pyramid, of course, is God. A 15 gram mushroom trip report, posted by MCFOT to the Psychonauts subreddit three years ago. I'm always interested in other people's psychedelic experiences, so I thought maybe others were curious about mine. Since I'm trying to recall everything I can and be as detailed as possible, this may wind up being very long. So, I'm sorry in advance, or you're welcome I guess. A little background on me. I first tried mushrooms back in the summer of 2018, and up until that point I hadn't experimented with any drugs other than alcohol and weed. I was curious to try shrooms because, as I read up on it, I noticed many people describing the trips as one of the most important experiences of their lives. This really intrigued me, as I equated that to finding your true purpose in life. I was a little nervous for my first experience, as I didn't really know what to expect. So to ease into it, 
A good friend of mine and I did about 2.5 grams. It wasn't what I was expecting, as I didn't hallucinate or notice anything out of the ordinary, but I still ended up having a great time. It felt like taking a strong edible or smoking a lot of weed and getting the giggles, like you would the first time you smoked, but minus the munches, which was a huge plus for me. A few months later, I gave them another try. I was determined to have one of the most profound experiences I could have. I was specifically interested in directly challenging one's ego, so I decided to try about 5 grams all at once, as I read that this would get me to that next level. But again, I didn't really notice any significant difference. This time, I did see some vibrant colours and felt incredibly joyful for all of it, so it was another great experience, but just not what I was quite looking for. The same friend who did them with me previously did the 5 grams as well. He got super high and at times very uncomfortable. At one point, he even paced around in my kitchen for an hour while we chatted. He said it was the only thing that kept him calm. I'm sure he must have walked over two miles that night. So, I'm certain the shrooms were legit. I figured I'd just try more next time. So after another few months, I decided to really up the dose, to 15 grams. Would 7, 9 or even 10 suffice? Probably, but I wanted to make sure I got there this time. Was it stupid? 100%. But I had no idea what I would be in for, so I just went for it. And thus, I made some shroom tea. I drank it and sat on my couch. Contrary to popular advice, I was by myself this time. I figured that if I got really drunk or really high, I'd prefer to be left alone rather than having to inconvenience someone to take care of me. So if I have a bad trip, I'd rather be left alone as well. I know, it's stupid. As I was sitting on my couch, Within 20 minutes, I could see some intense visuals starting to show up. I was blown away since this was my first time experiencing something like that. Something that is so unbelievable, yet so lucid at the same time. It truly was the closest I've ever felt to being a little kid since actually being one. I was so happy, and I was laughing uncontrollably. It didn't make any sense, but I really didn't care. It didn't have to. Then I remembered... I'd gotten back from the gym before I drank the tea, so I summoned enough sober brain power to jump in the shower before it really kicks in. I walked upstairs into my room, and like a typical person high on shrooms, by the time I'd gotten into my room I had no idea how much time had actually passed. My phone was downstairs, so I just went ahead and hopped in the shower. I closed my eyes, and I started to see a vast array of Aztec patterns. They were different shapes and sizes colourful and for some reason even hilarious. I opened my eyes so I could sit down. There was a built-in kind of seat in my shower. Weird, I know. Even though I was high as fuck, I was still very aware that I was in my shower, etc. So to help me get to that next level, I decided to turn off the lights, as well as the bathroom fan and the water in the shower. I figured if I cut out all the distractions, even for a minute, it might help. I know. Another great idea of mine. So there I was, chilling in a pitch black, silent shower like any normal human being does. I proceeded to rest my head in my hands so I could be somewhat comfortable, close my eyes, and try to find those Aztec shapes again. I was able to find them almost immediately, and this time they were far more vibrant in far greater numbers. As the patterns got more and more intense, I lost all feeling of my body, and I felt as if I was just floating. The shapes disappeared, and I thought maybe I was back in my shower again, but I still couldn't feel my body and it was really dark. I had lost all ties to reality. I felt like I was in a dream, so I treated the situation as if I was in a very lucid one. I was floating around and everything around me looked as if I was in a dark cave. I then went on to see these giant gargoyles just minding their own business in front of me. For whatever reason, I didn't feel afraid, I was just like, Wow, 20 foot gargoyles, and they didn't seem to notice me, so I did feel quite safe. This bad trip isn't even that bad, I feel she's thought to myself. Next thing I know, I straight up can't breathe. I had a close to drowning experience when I was about seven that I seem to have forgotten about until now, and at this point, the experience in my trip felt equally as shitty, and if not more terrifying than that memory as a child. I was still convinced I was in a dream. So I calmed myself down thinking, Hey man, you just have to wait this out and you'll wake up eventually. 
feeling of drowning became stronger and stronger. I tried my best to snap out of it, and eventually came to the realisation that oh fuck, this isn't a dream at all. Maybe I just fell over in the shower and I'm literally drowning in my own shower like an idiot. But I was certain I'd turn the shower off. Well, maybe I just fell over in a really weird position then. Even with impending doom, my high brain was trying to find a way to be able to convince myself that everything would be okay, and to remain calm even if it's just for a few more seconds. But then I began to feel this incredible pain in my ribcage, as if every rib was breaking from the force of my intercostal muscles, flexing so hard due to the fact that my body is desperate for oxygen. I started to feel an overwhelming amount of fear, panic and pain all at once. I was trying my best not to freak out, but I knew I had about five seconds of remaining calm left in me, and there was nothing I could do about it. After a few more minutes of this great experience, I came to the terms that I am in fact about to die in my shower. But at this point, I don't care, I just really wanted this experience to end. I began to see a small white light and thought, really? The stereotypical type is true? Everything went pitch black and I saw this pinprick of white light, it felt incredibly calm. I then felt like I experienced another stereotypical phenomenon of seeing my life flash before my eyes. I could feel my entire life all at once. The best way I can put it into words is that it was like watching a highlight reel of my entire life. Except though, it was like simultaneously looking at thousands and thousands of TVs, hearing them all at once, and having the ability to take it all in as well. I felt this inexplainable surge of emotions wash over me. Some things I was able to focus on were some childhood memories that I had never recalled since that time in my life. They weren't anything significant, it would just be me walking in our backyard or something simple like that. I started to think, well, maybe I didn't die, and that I've just become insane instead. I again began to see only the white light, and it was getting bigger and bigger, until all I could see was a bright light that encompassed everything. Then, it disappeared and I saw pure darkness again. I had one last thought of, damn it, I can't believe I died in my shower. But I realised that it's too late for it to even matter, so who cares? I guess I'm just dead. I actually felt totally fine with this, and began to wonder how long I would be stuck in this void. What even am I? Am I a soul? I had so many questions, with no source of answers whatsoever. However, I did feel that everything is going to be totally fine. I felt calm. I felt like I'd been here before. But the void wasn't 100% foreign to me. So I continued to float around, contemplating thoughts what felt like years. I had no idea what day, month or year it even was, and I felt like I was in this solitary state for decades. The entire concept of who I am, or was, was long gone. To me, it felt like I died so many years ago. It was enough time that I had actually moved on. I accepted my current reality of being this particle of energy, or whatever I was that was floating in this void. I felt like I was waiting here for my next life, but I wasn't sure if I would be a person, or if I would even be on the same planet, or if I would just be floating around for another 9,789 years. The longer I spent floating around though, the more I felt like I was in a familiar place. Then, I heard breathing. It got louder and louder, and I felt a glimmer of hope. Am I coming back to life? I still couldn't feel anything, but I could hear breathing, and I could somehow control it. This made no sense to me, but I just kept on breathing instead. I began to feel my right foot reforming, bone by bone. The sensation felt similar to that feeling of cracking your knuckles, an oddly satisfying relief. I could feel each part of my foot come back. It was so strange, but I didn't care. Next, I felt my right leg coming in. My breathing was getting louder and louder. Trying to maintain my breathing felt like it required the same amount of focus as when you're in a dream, and are trying to stay calm so you don't wake up. As I felt my leg forming, I heard a voice that asked me, Why are you here? I hadn't heard a voice for years, so it caught me off guard and I didn't respond. 
I just felt overcome with frustration, as I couldn't even think of an answer. The voice asked again, Why are you here? I'm not sure, I said. And as I said that, I felt my body collapse, and once again, I had died. This time, I was able to wake up from the void a lot faster. I found myself sitting back in my shower, but everything was distorted. I knew I was definitely still high, but I could at least recognise where I was, so I was thrilled. Then, I started hearing voices. I couldn't distinguish what they were saying, but they continued on, and I started to hear more and more. They were loud whispers, and then they got louder and louder, until it felt like headphones on maximum volume plus five. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from, and it freaked me out bad. I may not have died, I thought to myself, but I have fucked my brain up in some way. The voices continued for what felt like an eternity, until I yelled, just shut up, please, and to my surprise, they did. Finally enjoyed some peace and tranquility after this. I listened to my own breathing, being so grateful that it's all over. Well, this lasted for about 30 seconds, and once again, everything went pitch black, and I was back in the void. Guess I died again. I didn't care though. Anything was better than the voices. So I welcomed this familiar form of just being a floating energy particle again. Since I had a moment where I could think rationally for a second, I desperately tried to piece together any information I could to bring me back to some kind of reality, to get myself out of the trip. How long ago did I take the mushrooms? How long have I been high? How long ago did it feel like I drowned? Were the gargoyles a dream I had a week ago? I mean, what about the voices? The more I tried to find a way back to reality, the further I was drifting into the void. I then entered a repeated cycle of events that were as follows. Number one, I saw my entire life again, but sped up until the point where I took a large dose of mushrooms. It would take what felt like a few minutes to get to this point, but each time I got there, I could process and feel every experience I've ever had up until that very point. So strange. Once it got to the point of me weighing the mushrooms, the highlight reel would slow down to real lifetime for just a few minutes. The second occurrence was that after I drink the tea, thankfully it would speed up again and I feel my body reforming. Number three, I would hear a voice ask me, why am I here? And I would always reply with, I don't know. And finally four, I would then die and steps one to three would repeat. Each time that the cycle restarted, I would take a larger and larger dose of mushrooms. 20 grams, then 30, then 40, all the way up to 100 and so on. Every time I was reforming, I would regenerate more and more of my body each time. The reforming part was also in real time. The why are you here part was also in real time as well. And each time I was asked the question, I got a little bit closer to knowing the answer. As the cycles continued on, I could feel it on the tip of my tongue. I was so close. I felt like I knew it for a second, but just forgot briefly. I was so frustrated. How could I let something slip out of my mind like that? I tried as hard as I could to remember, and angrily yelled out, I don't know, and prepared to die for the 300 quintillionth time. I paused for a moment in the void and thought, okay, I definitely died, and now I'm in hell. It wasn't fear I felt at this point anymore, but the sheer frustration of getting so close to finding the answer each time and coming up short each instance. I'd been tripping for what felt like decades or centuries. I thought, for sure, I'm dead now, and I'm in hell, and I'm never going to get out of this cycle. Then, as I was reforming for the 311th quintillionth time, I got to the point where I could feel my entire body. I was so excited, but I had to remain calm because I didn't want to wake up, or in this case, die. Then, I saw nothing, but a pinprick show up in the black void. That damn little stereotypical light. I didn't think I'd be so happy to see it. It had been centuries. I could hear my breathing getting louder and louder, and with each breath, the light got bigger and bigger. 
and I started to hear voices again, but this time they were cheering me on and yelling at me, keep breathing, keep breathing. I felt like I was running a race, breathing was so exhausting. Just when I thought I had nothing left in the tank, I heard that son of a bitch again. Why are you here? This time though, it was getting drowned out by the sound of the people yelling and my own breathing. I ignored it and focused on the feeling of my body. I focused on my arms and hands. I opened and closed my fists. I could feel every bone in my hand crack like Bruce Lee getting ready to lay the smack down. Then, I focused all my energy on trying to find a handle in my shower so I could pull myself up. I felt it. I did everything I could to pull myself up. As I stood, I couldn't feel one of my legs and got worried. It's probably just asleep from sitting down for so long. I'll give it a minute. So I waited around a bit and felt my leg reform all at once. I slid open the glass door and slowly walked out. I opened the bathroom door to my room and felt a windstorm like a cool gust blowing my face. It was the most refreshing feeling I had ever felt in my life. I was still heavily breathing, and it was pitch black in my room too. I turned on my bedroom light and everything appeared to be normal. I walked back to the bathroom and turned on the light. Everything was normal. I looked at myself in the mirror and I appeared to be normal as well. Pupils still mid-dilated. Was it over? Was it finally over? I saw my reflection in the mirror and it was me still, but at age 8, then 80, and then back to my current age. I took a few deep breaths. I was back to normal. I left the lights on and took a shower. Afterwards, things were still back to normal, and all signs pointed to me being out of the trip and sobering up. I walked downstairs and all I could think about was how long was I out for? Had it been a day? A week? Were people trying to get hold of me? I was anxious to check my phone. I took a look and turns out what felt like hundreds of lifetimes was in reality only about 4.5 hours. I breathed a deep sigh of relief. I smoked a joint and relaxed for the rest of the evening. It was officially over. Well, if you made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you taking all of the time. Take care, everyone. A 10 gram god trip. Posted to the Shroom subreddit by Craze Gunner four months ago. This is a trip report after taking 10 grams of magic mushrooms. The strain was PE. I want to take a minute to clear some stuff up before I get into the trip report. This was not recreational by any means, and I never intended for it to be that way. I did these 10 Gs because I'm a combat vet that suffers severely with PTSD, anxiety, anger, the whole nine things that come up with being a combat vet. I've done several trips in the past ranging from 2 grams up to 7, and while those trips helped me to take the edge off my anxiety, I wanted to go to the source and find out what the exact thing is that is causing my anxiety in the first place. Stare it in the eyes, make it my bitch, and as you'll soon find out, why was I wrong about that? This trip was purely therapeutical. So to start it out, I'd gotten 15 grams of penis envy from my dealer, because my girlfriend was wanting to do her own 5 gram trip, and I was still at the time on the edge of doing another 7 gram one, or going full board to find the source of my anxiety and do the 10 gram trip. Come the next morning, and I was weighing everything out, I decided that I'm going to go full bore and do the 10 gram trip. I weighed them out and got to exactly 10 Gs. I put them in my blender and made them a fine powder. I then made myself a tea and mixed in two hot chocolate packets and drank it like I have done with all my trips prior. I then lay down in my bed, I put my earbuds in and turned on a lyricless trippy song playlist, put on my trip mask, literally just a sleeping mask to block out all incoming light, and waited. 
My girlfriend was on my right side and was there to trip sit me. This was not her first ride and thank God it wasn't. The last time that I truly remember was 8.48am. Within probably 10 minutes I began to see light visuals. At first it was me above a lake and I was watching the ripples of the water go through the lake itself. It was very peaceful and sombre. This very quickly escalated to visions that I was in a room and there were people there. They began to open the door and leave. I told them not to leave me. I didn't want them to leave me, and I was enjoying the time that I was spending with them. Shortly after saying that though, I realised I was going against my one biggest piece of advice, and that was fighting the mushroom. I was fighting them trying to get them to leave, so I told them they can go should they like, and they did. Visions of them were replaced with a black demonic figure, with a handful of some golden energy looking stuff. It's quite hard to describe how it looked to me. This figure then began to take away the energy, and I once again set myself up for failure, and told it not to take the energy at all. After realising the mistake that I had made, I told that it could take it. For a brief moment after that, I was talking to a black man about something, and he phased into a red car, his head turning into a pizza box. I'd been craving Domino's pizza for some time, so I'm sure that just made its way into my trip that way. It was very weird, and I remember exclaiming out loud and audibly laughing that this man's head turned into a pizza box. From there, the trip took a super awesome turn, and I had become literal nothingness. I was infinitely big, and infinitely small, and I was left to explore the world itself. God told me that the world to me was my side of the bed and he proclaimed to me that he wanted me to explore it. I began to physically explore my bed. I was flipped upside down on the bed for some time, putting my head where my feet normally go, and feet where my head goes. I was feeling and exploring my girlfriend's legs. I was a literal nothingness, left to explore the vast darkness of under the covers. It was the most incredible feeling. At some point when I was under there, I pulled off my trip mask and changed my playlist from my lyricless playlist to my normal one, which contained songs from Dayseeker, Bad Omens and Lorna Shaw, heavy metal, death metal bands. Eventually I came out from underneath the covers, and resumed laying in my normal spot on my bed. From here, my memory becomes kind of clogged on a chain of events leading up to about 5 minutes prior to me peaking, but I did begin to slowly dissolve into a panicked state of mind and I was unaware of the change in the trip, and so was my girlfriend. Things began to take a turn when I started becoming indecisive. I would say I wanted sparkling water, and my girlfriend would go get me some. When she would come back, I would exclaim that I no longer wanted any. And this happened several times. I'd given my girlfriend my phone and told her to change songs when I requested. At one point I had to restart Immortal by Lorna Shaw three times because I wasn't happy with it. Then, I quieted down and laid in bed. I went through about 30 minutes to music before asking her to restart back on Immortal once again. And then, shit went south. And it went south quick. I rolled over and jokingly said to my girlfriend, I'm scared I'm going to fall off the floor. Then about 10 seconds later, I, I did it again, saying the same thing but slightly more serious. And then, a third time I did it except this time it was filled with rage. I slung my trip mask across my room and screamed at her, I'm scared I'm going to fall off the fucking floor. The trip at this point had become sour, and I was quickly losing my mind, ego, and everything about me was just quickly vanishing. I was only starting the ego death right now. I remember looking out of my window, which is normally full of trees, and it was all grey, and there were no trees to see at all. It was at this point, I knew I was in for something, and I wasn't prepared for it. I pulled my covers over my eyes and pulled my earbuds out saying, I don't want the music anymore, and I just laid there. I felt my soul surge with the energy of a million souls, and I began a physical climb up what looked like Mount Everest. I was out of body. This was not an easy climb, and it was everything. It was all my trauma. My PTSD, my anxiety, my anger, just fucking everything. This was that mountain, symbolised. 
and the power of those million souls was what gave me the energy to climb this mountain. I was peaking, peaking harder than I'd ever peaked in my life. Then, I came out of the out-of-body experience. There was music in my ears, but nothing was playing. My earbuds were out and I'm pretty sure my TV was off. What I was hearing was the most beautiful sound I have ever heard in my life. I broke down, and I broke down hard. I was crying the hardest that I have cried in years. I told my girlfriend to hold on, because I was just feet from the peak of this mountain of trauma that I had just climbed, and I needed her physical energy to complete this climb. She held on, and I fucking blasted off. It was amazing. It was the greatest release of emotion and pain that I have ever wanted. I remember saying, This is what I've been after. And it truly was. It was exactly what I needed. And my girlfriend was there with me to give me the final bit of strength to come up and stand atop that mountain of torment and trauma. I thank the souls that had joined me on my journey, and who had so graciously given me their energy. I remember screaming at the absolute top of my lungs, I am God! And I meant it with the conviction of a billion souls. Because in that moment, standing atop that mountain, I was. I was God. There was only one person in the universe that could have done what I just did, and it therefore meant that I was that. I got out of my bed and came into my office and collapsed on the floor, a broken man. I was broken. I just overcame what I'd been using shrooms to help me overcome, and I didn't know what it was I was meant to be anymore. I began the most brutal ego death that I've ever seen, and I was the test subject on this ride to hell. I was on the floor of my office, screaming and crying. I called for my girlfriend to come in and just be with me, because I was so fucking scared. I was a broken man, and at the same time, I felt like I was a god. I was a broken god. One that had gone astray from the normal path of the gods, and one that will forever be exiled and forgotten about. Unless he does one thing. I asked my girlfriend to get me my favourite sweatpants. What was coming up was something I could have never been prepared for, and I don't think anyone would ever be prepared for. She brought me my sweatpants and a blanket, and I laid there knowing what I must do. But it felt so good to have that thought. It was the happiest thought of my life, while simultaneously being filled with dread that I must actually do it. It was like this trip was the pathway to it. I knew what I had to do and I learnt about those two incidents prior that I must not fight the mushroom. I must give in to it and listen to it. The it that I am talking about is suicide. My trip had turned sour. It had turned beyond sour and I was happy about it. I was extremely happy that I was prepared to kill myself. I was seeing it as a gateway to the next level. I was at a fork in the road. I began pacing about, because while this thought was on one brain wavelength of mine, another brain wavelength was being the more sober one, and it knew suicide is never the option. I knew how bad it was. It knew that I must never do that. I looked at my girlfriend, as she was following me around as I paced between the bedroom and my office, and I told her, Whatever happens, happens. That was all that I was able to say. I was trying to ground myself, but the combination of the overwhelming music in my ears, and the ungodly intense visuals, and the fact that at this point I'd completely lost my grip with reality, made it literally impossible to ground myself. I was panicking. I was in the midst of the most brutal ego death, and I was at a crossroads. Fight the mushroom and live, or submit and fucking die. And obviously I fought, and I fought with fucking everything that I had. The only way that I knew how to fight it was lay down in the bed. So I did. I was still trying to ground myself at this point because suicide was still ever so prevalent in my head. To me, reality was just a word. It was not something tangible. It was not something that I could touch. It was not me, laying on my bed with my girlfriend standing up next to me. I was a nothingness again, but in the most horrible way. I tried everything to ground myself. But at this point, I lost the ability to distinguish between what was genuine reality, my memories, 
thick bullshit that my brain was concocting and whatever shit else was coming out. It was all one, and the one that it was, was not a good one. Now I had four trains of thought, and four sets of emotions all running congruent with each other. The primary one was one where I truly believed that I had indeed blown my brains out with my 12 gauge shotgun. I believed that I was living in the spirit realm, and it was the most horrifyingly peaceful place that I have ever been. There was a point I remember getting out of bed and checking my gun safe, ensuring that the door on it was still closed and locked. I was making sure that I hadn't gone through with the suicide. While I was able to tell that the door was shut, seeing this did not calm down this train of thought. The second was one when my girlfriend also panicked, and had called 911 and my mother. I genuinely believed that there were EMTs and police standing outside of my door and my house and they were waiting for me to calm down from the trip before they came in and swooped me up and arrested me for some unimaginable crime that I felt that I committed. I was petrified. It was the scariest thing that I've ever experienced and felt. These two aforementioned trains of thought would sometimes meld with each other and become one. The third train of thought was one where I had my psychotic break and I was actively being carted off on a stretcher being taken to a loony ward because I was now permanently stuck in this headspace and level of high. I had accepted it, and I understood it. I was very matter of fact with this. I accepted it, and I felt that I deserved what I had coming for me, and that was being locked in a loony ward for the rest of my god-given life. I told my girlfriend that I loved her, and that I knew that I was going to lose her, my job and my sponsorship. Just weeks prior to this trip, I signed my first major sponsorship contract for motorcycle racing, and it's something that brings me great joy, seeing where all my hard work has finally gone, and things were finally starting to come up. The final train of thought wasn't really a train of thought at all, but it was the light at the end of this horrific tunnel. Little did I know, but when I was at my peak, standing on top of the mountain of my trauma and pain, there really was one more step I hadn't yet stepped up. And this was the final step. I got to rebuild my brain to be how I wanted. I got to pick and choose what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to throw away. I was rebuilding my very brain and it brought me great solace to get to do this. So I did. I rebuilt my brain. I picked and chose what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to lose. I peaked at about 10.30 according to the timestamp on my GoPro and I estimate this phase of the trip to have lasted until about 12 noon. Through that hour and a half, I was slowly realising that I was starting to get to be able to ground myself. It started out with me figuring out the time and the date. To me though, they meant nothing, and were just words, but I was able to understand something physical. In this time, I set a goal for myself, a goal of 4pm. I just needed to make it to 4pm and my girlfriend was there to help me with that goal. I cannot tell you how many times I asked her the time, date, and just repeated, I just need to make it to 4pm now. My girlfriend said it was at least five times that I asked this. Slowly but surely, I came down. I was not stuck in that frame of mind like I thought I was, and I indeed didn't kill myself. I wasn't being taken off to the loony ward, and there weren't police and EMTs outside my door and house, waiting for me to come down from the trip. I was going to be okay. I was alive and I had a new brain. A brain that I rebuilt to the specifications that I wanted. One without trauma or pain or suffering. I still had my wonderful girlfriend, and she was there the whole trip. Fast forward 11 days. This trip was on December 3rd, and I'm still struggling. I find myself sometimes second guessing if I'm really alive, not really believing that I'm not in the spirit realm. But that is becoming less and less as time goes on. I keep replaying this trip in my head, to gain a better understanding of what went wrong and where it went wrong. I think it went wrong when I yeeted my trip mask across the floor and exclaimed that I'm scared of falling off the fucking floor. I don't know why it went bad and I probably never will know why it went bad. All I know is that I must take that trip and learn and grow from it. There is a lesson for everything, and I'm learning that lesson every day now. As for my rebuilt brain, 
It's incredible. I really did rebuild my brain. Since then, I haven't had those issues that I mentioned prior. I'm able to get to sleep in a reasonable time now. I'm able to sleep well, in fact. Something that I haven't had in years. I don't have nightmares or night terrors anymore now. I think that as bad as this trip was, it was also just as good. I'm taking every day in stride now. I'm working on myself and my issues. And for my girlfriend, she didn't know. She was not aware that I took the 10 gram heroic dose. She thought that I was doing 7 grams. And it wasn't until I was laying on the floor of my office that she learnt the true size of the dose that I took. I hate that I put her through that trip. I regret at least not telling her and giving her a heads up. But I am forever grateful that she was there with me and helped me climb the final steps of a mountain. I owe her dearly for that. And that's it, man. And that's my trip. I call it my God trip. Because I was. I was a broken and misplaced God. Simple as that. My eight dried grand mushroom trip showed me the stream of all creation and taught me love and forgiveness. A mushroom trip report sent in by a subscriber. For most of my life, I never used any drugs or alcohol. It was only two years ago that I started to dabble in marijuana and psychedelics during a particular low point in my life. I'd lost my business due to COVID. I lost the job I'd gotten right before I started getting treatment for adult ADHD. My wife got diagnosed with bipolar schizoaffective disorder. My mother got diagnosed with cervical dystonia, a movement disorder, and that brought my wife and I to live with her to help her out. I was doing a bunch of side hustle delivery jobs to keep the bills paid, but debt was still piling up with all my wife's new medical bills. I was just angry and depressed all of the time. I was looking for anything to help me at this point, and I took to psychedelics very quickly. My first dose of mushrooms was 1.8 grams, and it was amazing. I spent years prior meditating and reading Eckhart Tolle, Thich Nhat Hanh, and all those other mindfulness experts, but I never truly knew mindfulness until that very moment. 2.5 grams helped me stop fearing death. In deep meditation, I dissolved into the infinite and realized I was nothing but octillions of atoms and would always exist in different forms for all of existence. I tried some LSD and had a magical evening with my wife. Then I did DMT with a friend and got blasted through dimensions, standing naked in front of laughing shadows and entered a palace of moving fractal heads that inside had a being of complete blackness show me all the thousands of lives I've lived and then shot me through eternity and back to earth. I was ready for a real heroic dose now. As a heavier person, I thought 5 grams might not be that much, so I opted for 8 grams of dried mushrooms instead. I sat with my wife, watching the Amazon show undone, waiting for the mushrooms to kick in, with the plan of going to our room with sound cancelling headphones and a sleep mask ready for me. I closed my eyes, and the entire house felt like it was giving me a hug, and that's when I knew it was time to go. I opened my eyes, and the patterns on the walls were climbing upwards. I got up slowly and walked my way to the bedroom. I got under my blanket and put my headphones and sleeping mask on. For 20 minutes, I just laid there watching the most beautiful show I'd ever seen. Intricate, gorgeous fractals and spirals swirling in front of me while my entire body felt like it was getting a massage. Everything just felt amazing. Then, this bright light flew across my vision and a voice said in my head, are you really doing this, or are you just chasing an experience? And this told me I might be in for a big thing. I'm really doing this, I said. The voice said sternly, If you're not going to do it, if you're not going to take it seriously, then there's no reason I should bother with you. I said, I'm really doing this. And suddenly, I was transported to a golden river for which all of life and existence and love flowed from. 
one touch, and you lived an entire life. Saw an entire world come and go. Heat began surging through my entire body. Are you willing to let go? The voice asked. Yes, I said. Then let go, the voice replied. I pulled my blanket over my head, and suddenly I was experiencing my own burial. I had died. Usually I'm very claustrophobic, and I can't even stand having a blanket over my face. But I didn't even remember putting it there after a moment. You're not letting go, said the voice. It sounded like it was getting a little angry. It won't be pleasant if you don't let go. I didn't understand, and suddenly the casket I was in was tossed into a wood chipper, and my feet and legs started to be devoured. Panic started to set in. The trip was taking a turn now, but suddenly, my dog pushed his way into the room, and he jumped on the bed, laying beside me. And this was the last thing I'd remember about the outside world. I gave over completely, and suddenly I was thrown back into the stream of life, experiencing all the joy and love the world had to offer, forgiving myself for not being where I wanted to be in life, and realising that none of that mattered. That being angry at what was happening in life was a worthless endeavour, and that would change nothing about the circumstance, that anything bad or painful or inconvenient would never be changed by my moods or my outrage or my anger. If I couldn't change something, I had to accept it, because it wasn't the world doing anything to me, it was just things happening. With this realisation, the being of light pulled me from the lake, and he asked, Do you want to know how to live in this lake forever? I was excited. I'd never experienced such peace and joy and happiness in my entire life. Whatever it was, I would do it. You must apologise for the wrong you did without wanting an apology for the wrongs committed against you. You must realise that you don't matter, that no person is being mean to you, that their problems are their problems, and even if they take it out on you, it's none of your concern, and no reason for you to act poorly. This was in relation to my mother-in-law, who I had banned from our life after a big fight, in which cruel words were exchanged about how I care for and help my wife deal with her mental health. Now apologise, the voice said. I went through a dozen different apologies. Each time, the voice kept getting angry, telling me that I was doing it wrong. I just kept trying to explain myself, find agreement, just forget about it, and the visual started getting darker, creepier, more violent. Until I realised I needed to be just fully responsible, and I realised how to truly apologise. The colours began to turn vibrant, and we returned once again to this golden stream of life. And then I was pushed back into my own life and my body, and I pulled the blanket from my head and just felt amazing. I had my wife call her mother for me to apologise. I was taking full responsibility now. She called her mother, and I apologised. The woman was still herself, and nothing was truly mended, but I do feel for her now. I'm not angry at her. I don't hate her. I just feel for her that she's in so much pain and so much sadness. For the past year since this trip, I've lived an incredibly joyful life. No sadness, no anger, no depression, no fears and worries. Every day is joyful, even the painful ones. I am found. A Siloaska plus 6 grams mushrooms trip report. Uploaded to the Actualize.org self-improvement forum by Adod. Siloaska is said to make shrooms dosages twice as strong, so maybe it was more like the effects of 12 grams overall. I took 90 milligrams of Harmala extract, taking in maybe 1 ounce of orange juice. Then I took 6 grams of mushrooms, lemon tech, approximately half an hour later. 20 minutes after taking the shrooms, I began to feel a very slight head change from the harmalas. I planned to take a warm shower, then make my way to my bedroom. I hopped in the shower, and within a couple minutes I began to start feeling slightly distant from physical reality. Not a high feeling, or even a normal psychedelic feeling, 
It just felt a bit distant from reality and myself, if that makes sense. I sat down in the shower to relax, and this feeling of being distant was quickly becoming stronger and stronger. After maybe five minutes or so, I started feeling spacey and disoriented, and began zoning out. I became unable to feel almost any connection with my body or normal state of mind. I started feeling a slight panic feeling. I wasn't panicking, but my body seemed to be. The panic subsided, but the feeling of being distant was so intense that I felt as if control over my mind was almost completely gone, and that was enough to start to make me worry about what was going to happen when this got stronger. Will I completely lose myself and my judgement? So much that I'm going to do something stupid? Staying on that train of thought for even a short time was beginning to make me panic again, so I decided to get out of the shower and head to my bedroom. I turned off the shower, grabbed my towel, but was so zoned out into an almost deep meditative feeling state that drying off felt impossible. So I slowly slid down and sat back down in the shower with the towel in my lap and stared off completely zoned out for I don't know how long. I eventually realised what was happening and managed to crawl out of the shower onto the floor of the bathroom. As I was sitting on the bath mat on the bathroom floor, I began to lose the feeling of myself being located where my body was. I also began to lose my usual sense of self. I tried to resist this and extreme panic and resistance very quickly began to take over, but no matter how hard I tried to resist this feeling of losing myself, it kept getting stronger and stronger. I can't quite describe what happened next. I was no longer in a state of analysing or even knowing that I was a person on the ground in a bathroom on psychedelics. I was blank. I was dead. I felt nowhere and like nobody, I felt nothing. Everything what I thought perception meant was just gone. What I would normally call me did not exist. I stayed this way for, I would guess, at least an hour until I became aware again, but not aware in the normal sense. Aware is in a sort of non-localised and unattached awareness. Just pure awareness, unbiased awareness. I think at this point someone could have ran in the bathroom and cut my throat with a machete and I would have just watched. Without resistance or panic or care at all in the world, because I no longer identified with this body as the I like usual. I was no longer a human body or brain or ego. I was just the awareness of reality. I did not think, oh, I'm awareness of reality. I just was. I had the feeling of a realisation that this was actually always the case, but the drugs had somehow removed the distractions that always stopped me from realising this. I then found myself kind of back into my body and thought, wow, everything that is distracting me from what I really am is so remarkably well designed. But designed how? And then the realisation happened of, oh, designed by me. I marvelled at the complexity and the perfection of this, and I immediately began laughing. It felt like everything and all of existence and reality had always just been me playing the game of God, playing hide and seek with himself, and I finally found me. Everything made so much sense. Nothing could possibly be more obvious than this now. The distractions and illusions were all gone. Of course, how could I have not known? Still naked, I uncontrollably became exhausted and fell face first into the clothes on the floor and began to mutter. It could be no other way. It could be no other way. Over and over and over again until I lost the feeling. I felt much more back in my body. I tried to remember and think about everything I had experienced couldn't quite put my finger back on it no matter how hard I tried. I spaced out completely for a few minutes. I then fell face first again into the clothes, went right back into it, sat up, lost it, fell face first again, went back into it, sat up and lost it, fell and went back and this probably happened a dozen times until I sat up and was completely back in my body and terrified. I was once again a human body on a floor on psychedelics after just being boundless. I had the weirdest panic attack possible for maybe an hour. I forgot who I was or what was happening. I finally thought to change my setting. I struggled to my bedroom and focused on my breath until the panic was gone, and I was filled with a sense of love and bliss like I have never known. I effortlessly realised so much of my childhood traumas that I never realised before, and felt instantly healed from them. There was forgiveness and complete understanding of those who I was unknowingly holding grudges against for so many decades. The rest of the night and part of the next day, 
I just felt completely out of my mind. Had no visuals, no auditory hallucinations, or anything else that I was expecting during the entire trip. I've tripped maybe 30 times, and never have I ever had something even remotely close to this. All of my NNDMT trips seem like nothing compared to this experience. The Shroom Mother, a 50 grams of fresh penis envy mushrooms trip report, uploaded to the Shroomery forum six years and one month ago by lapse of reason. Before sharing my trip bits with you, I need to say that I am not experienced with mind altering substances. Weed has been visiting my lungs around three to four times in my life, but that's about it. I've been challenging my own mind though in different other ways, like in silent retreats and physical challenges to the body lying on a block of ice until it melts, etc. I'm a mental health professional, working with children. I have a loving family and a good life. My reason to use shrooms was to challenge my mind and surrender to a spiritual experience. A friend acquainted me to the shrooms and I decided I want to grow them myself, which I did. The strain was penis envy. This friend is experienced, or so he claimed, with LSD, shrooms and other hallucinogens. After a four month preparation time, reading a lot and talking to fellow psychiatrists, as well as reading studies on psilocybin, etc., and growing the penis envies, we agreed to meet up at his apartment. He also wanted to invite other people he knew, and I didn't. I wasn't happy about that, as I did not want to trip around strangers. As a matter of fact, I was actually feeling tripping alone, but I did not want to appear as an ass towards my friend. This friend is a good soul but I still didn't feel 100% comfortable with him around. There's no real coherence what the trip is concerned, but bits of, in and out of our world. I used to think of this experience as being a ride between the outer world, what happened to me outside of me during the trip, and my inner world, which was the trip itself. What happened outside is rather an indicator of a bad trip, and proved to be a very bad idea to trip with this friend. My inner world in this first experience of the shrooms was actually pure bliss and hell and purgatory and enlightenment and I would not want to miss it a bit. My English is not my mother tongue, so please excuse my partial awkward use of the language. Setting. Apartment. Dogs were around. Sunny beautiful day. Ingestion. On an empty stomach. 50 grams of penis envy. Fresh. I will now describe my own trip. The perceptions of my inner world. Afterwards, I will describe what, according to the others, my friend, his mates, the police and hospital, happened in the outer world. Most of the trip I have lost completely the notion of who and where I am. Track of time and space and contact with reality altogether has been lost. This trip occurred about two years ago, and I can say that my personality changed for the better ever since. I am planning to meet with the Mother Mushroom again someday though. I ate the whole 50 grams fresh all at once. The effect was almost instant. Ten minutes into that and I was laughing hysterically, realising that I just can't think straight anymore. My friend ingested some but could not eat them due to the taste. Drank some milk and, according to my recollection, he did not take more than ten grams fresh. We went to the darkened bedroom. He put some music on and I lay under a blanket as I felt very cold. The dog was warming me up and I hugged her feeling a heartbeat with my palm. The friend, I'll call him A, lied down and told me to listen to the music and breathe. It took 20 minutes into the journey and I had vivid open eye hallucinations. A was morphing into his dog. His arms were turning hairy and ugly. I closed my eyes and found myself into lots of patterns and doors, corridors and strange figures like gnomes with theatrical expressions and textures. Lots of colours were abundant, vivid animation. I opened my eyes and the room was beautiful filling up with 3D patterns moving around. A went to the bathroom and I asked him why I didn't eat everything. He replied in an angry tone that I should relax. He does not want my bad vibes. Do I need to kill you to shut up? He said. I was scared at this, but drifted fastly into my own reality. I must say, he never talked to me like that before. We were never involved in a relationship or something closer than friendship. 
After a while, he asked me to go to the other room and bring him water. We had plenty of water around though, but I stood up and tried to fetch him a cup. I started to laugh about how slow I was thinking and processing language. Then I felt how my eyes just watered incredibly, pouring with rain. I didn't feel sad, just a bit lonely. I asked my friend if I can hold his hand, and he gave it to me. Then I only remember that I wanted the dog to hug and feel safe as I began to feel paranoid. The more I got into the trip, the more I began to lose it. I went to my bag and took a bottle of water out I had brought with me and drank it. Then I realised this water bottle is the only thing reminding me of my reality before the trip. I tried hard to concentrate on what else was real outside of my trip. The dog. Yes, the dog is real. Good, relax. Focus on the breathing. Oh, paranoia again. What if I drown in my water? Nah, my water is real. Who am I? Am I water? Sure, I, I come from water. Is death water? Such a thought. I didn't fight it. I just remembered the advice not to let myself get trapped by the visuals. So I tried opening my eyes and looking at my hands. I couldn't even see them. Instead, all I saw were patterns, blurred music, the texture of the dog morphing with A. Scary shit. I didn't want to stay in the darkness anymore, so I went to the sunny room. The darkness looked like hell. Paranoia again. Everybody I love and care for must be involved in magic mushrooms. Now I am in the infinite labyrinth of the mycelium, and there's only a loop of time with no escape. I pictured my family members, friends, and colleagues, and had plausible associations of how all of them were all involved with the mushroom conspiracy. The fixed idea, if I ever get out of this loop, I need to initiate others into this, i.e. my children, to come into the mushroom labyrinth. At this point, I was sure that the whole point of maturing is to get into the mycelium of the mushroom and be born again in there. I was grateful, but also not content enough. I remember going down to the floor and sticking my tongue out like a snake. I was a scary and morphing creature that inhabited this mushroom world. It all made sense. That life and death begins and ends with the mushroom. My reverence for them was so huge that I paced between the sunny room and the dark room, thinking I am in the underground, and then I raise above the ground like the shrooms do. On the floor in the sunny room, I felt how good it is to be alone. I had a sense I understood all the films of Kubrick and Bergman, and that I am in the 50s in New York, trapped in a film scene as another person. I pitched my mole, I have one on my chest, and said, this is her mole, but it's not me. I was completely lost in space and time at this moment. Everything was strange. There was no contact going on with A. At some point, I wanted to go to the bathroom to pee, but I needed to go through the other dark room where A was. I think he was masturbating, so I apologised for disturbing and went to the bathroom. On the toilet, I realised that I needed to pee a lot. I would stand up and go down again, then put my hand in my mouth as if I wanted to eat myself. I thought I was a sort of Mobius band, a never-ending cycle of life and death. At this point, time was running so fast that I saw my past life and realised I'm speeding into the future. The future was my death. I crawled on the floor and waited to die. I was not afraid. I stuck the hand in my mouth deep and waited that I ingest myself. But I realised I pissed on the body I was wearing and thought, what the hell? I don't want to get out of my going to the future. I speeded even more to the future and some voice was stopping me, telling me that if I want to go to the future, then I will need to slow down and go to the past. This is where I started to freak out. I did not want to go back. I was told I needed to go to the pain of the Holocaust if I want to get into the light. I need to go back to where man was born, to the ape stadium, and even more backwards until I become a spore. I am not allowed to die forwards. I need to die backwards, the voice said. I fought it off with my breathing. I was convinced that if I keep being the sunlight and breath, that time will just hold still and I can die forward in the future. I did not want to go back to the Holocaust, because I knew I would be Hitler. Sorry for this thought, A is half Jewish. I don't want to be Hitler and kill all them people. I refused that. I looked at my hands. They were turning hairy and I was morphing into an ape. 
And then, all of a sudden, I was in New York again, realising my husband has died in the war. I took all my clothes off and started to see some people I did not know in the flat. Holy shit, these are my employees, I thought, and they helped me grieve my dead husband. They slapped me and hit me, and I was lying on the floor. I thought I'm dying again. In this film too. The people were mean and shouted. One sprayed something on me, but I couldn't find a face. One poured water over me. Another one laughed at my mid-forties used up woman's body. I felt attacked from all directions and told everybody shouting, I love you. I love you all. Look, my grief is only pure love. Look at it. I asked one of the people if I may touch them. I needed comfort, but they just continued to scream at me and I felt a hard blow on the head. My head began shrinking and my bones were softening as well. I felt like my skull was being born into another reality and I thought, oh, that's relieving. I don't like to be trapped in this reality with those jerks around. They tried to make me swallow some pills and then some coffee. I told them to let me finish my journey and just comfort me. Please hold me. I love you. I love all of you. Then I was begging for them to be quiet. Dogs were barking wildly. Metallic sounds were disturbing me and I lost orientation if it's the past or whether it's the future I'm going into. I was being laughed at and humiliated and I thought my skull was trying to get through the birth canal into a reality of a mother that was Gaia, our earth goddess, but these people were holding me back. At some point I turned around, I was still naked, and thought if I concentrate on the time and on my breathing, they'll disappear. Quiet. Partly, reality was settling in. Policemen were arresting me and putting handcuffs on. I was still tripping hard. I woke some 2.5 hours later, perfectly lucid at the hospital. I left right away. After talking to my friend about what happened, he reported that he called the friends and they showed up. That was the moment I was freaking out, and they were the ones trying to calm me down by spraying a deodorant in my face and giving me coffee and cigarettes. <laughs> Just as a side note, what the fuck, why would you spray deodorant into someone's face to calm them down? I mean, if someone did that to me, I'd be fucking kicking off big time. They hit me in the head and I had pain for days, even though no one admits having done that. They wanted me to shower, but I was paranoid that they wanted to drown me. My friend was pretty angry with me because of punching his friend in the face. It turned out to have been a very bad idea to have strangers coming in while tripping so hard. Outcome. All in all, I am very grateful of this experience. Overcoming the pain of death, being part of a circle of life in the fractal universe, and feeling so much love despite all of the humiliation and beatings is something so strong and it still sticks with me to this day. Even so many years have passed now and I still feel very grounded and was not angry with what my friend did or said. But I am sure now that next time I'm tripping, I will choose other people to be around. I need to have a sit that is mentally much stronger than A is, to be in my own environment as well, and to try and exclude any external distress around me. The police and hospital action were, looking back, a great lesson of overcoming my anxiety towards authority. I am much more self-confident now than when I needed to deal with them. I know that I need to go back to the Mother Mushroom, as I feel that I was disturbed in the contemplation of that infinite world between darkness and light. But right now, I'm not prepared to do that yet. Love and peace, Elena. Yeah.